are Sal Madudes and welcome back to Bilby Green. Today I'm doing a six month update on my IKEA cabinet paludarium. If you'd like to see how I made this IKEA paludarium, check out the link in the video. At the moment, it's going really well. This paludarium has actually exceeded my expectations. The cabinet itself has retained its stability and I haven't had a single leak yet. Although the sustainability of the cabinet was questioned by a few people in the comments in the original video, it is holding up really well and pretty much looks exactly as it was in the original setup. The mangrove trunk driftwood has done exceedingly well and I think it has quite a long life ahead of it. There's been no mold or breakdown in the timber itself. Even though the mangrove trunk base sits in water constantly, there isn't much breakdown at all at the moment. The rain system, which is set to a timer, seems to have taken on a life of its own. Anywhere the water touches in the drips from the irrigation, life finds a way and has sprouted out everywhere. Saying this, anywhere water doesn't reach, you will notice that the moss that I originally put on and some of the plants have died away. That's okay though, because I wanted this piece to become a natural entity in itself. Looking at individual species along the trunk, the Monstera blequa has done pretty well. The bromeliads have done really, really well, and they've put out many pups in the six months of this creation. Some of the pups of the uh, bromeliads I've placed down lower in the trunk, and even in low light at the bottom of the paludarium, the bromeliads seem to do really well. One significant difference from the original build is the fact that I placed the floodlights inside the paludarium itself rather than on the outside. This Pilea Glauca, which I placed in at a later date, has done quite well. It needs a lot of water but it has become a hanging plant, which is kind of cool. The top of the paludarium shows a great example of what the water touches lives. On the top right hand corner here, the pilea doesn't actually get too much water. So you can see parts of it dying back. In the midsection of the trunk, the bromeliads get a lot of water and they seem to have taken advantage of this. I try not to interact with the plants on the trunk as a lot of them are very sensitive to touch and I don't want to interrupt them and their growth patterns. At the base of the setup, I've taken out all substrate and rocks and replaced it with just a few sproutings of java fern. I feel like this has given the setup a huge advantage in terms of uh, water filtration and my maintenance has been reduced significantly as a result. Every now and then when I feel the urge, I open up the cabinet and do some mild maintenance 
just pruning using my fingernails and picking out any debris that might be along the trunk. I really like this process. It, uh, it, 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 it's, it's good mindfulness. When I originally set this up, it was at my home. I am a primary school teacher and at the moment, the paludarium resides in my classroom. My students get a really good kick out of it. They check it out every day and I've even got a couple of students looking after it uh, on a weekly basis. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. A lot of you have been asking for this update in particular for the IKEA cabinet paludarium. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time on PLB Green.